Now, the last time we spoke was several months ago, and we talked about Afghanistan. And at that time, the Taliban had decided that little girls couldn't go to school. Obviously, the situation for women has worsened significantly. Just last week, they murdered an MP. They shot her dead in her home. What are you doing to help that situation? Well, actually, first of all, monitoring the situation and all the measures and the decisions that have been uh, taken by Taliban, it's, it's very frustrating and disappointing from our point of view. We've been trying to reach out to them in order to understand what are the uh, rationale behind the, these decisions because we cannot see it rationalized from a religious perspective or even from a cultural perspective. Because but you can't be surprised. We are not surprised, but we've been actually uh, talking to them and engaging with them, and especially the people that we've been engaging with them. They've been showing uh, a moderate reactions to our engagement, but it has not been demonstrated on the ground. So we don't understand what are the motives of, of such a decisions. It's just more and more provoking and making the situation much worse for them and for the Afghan people. We've been trying to uh, reach out recently after, uh, after this decision taking place. We've been trying also through uh, other means, with other, jointly with other Muslim countries, uh, to talk to them and to go together there. We are now in, in, in a consultation with other Muslim countries in order to find a plan at least to deal with uh, such a situation. Because we believe, uh, especially when it comes to the socioeconomic uh, issues that relate to Afghanistan, the region needs to play uh, more active role in, in, in that front. And I think that we, we would be like the best countries that can talk to them and at least can stop them or can help in reversing such a decisions. So you don't regret your role as a mediator with the Taliban? Well, we will never regret uh, to be a mediator or to help to facilitate talks because all the problems we have been seeing around us, at the end of the day, they need someone to talk to all parties and in order to get to a solution. What would be the alternative for a situation in Afghanistan? Is, the, is that going to be a civil war? This is not, not a solution. We would like to see a solution that can come through dialogue, through an understanding, addressing uh, concerns of all parties, and making sure that every, everyone in, in, in Afghanistan enjoy his rights, especially women. Yeah. Women in Afghanistan feel, no doubt, totally abandoned. What is your message to them? Our message to them actually is to they will prevail as they've been prevailing before. Uh, we will stand with them, we will support them, we will, not, we will not exert any effort in order to make sure that we are helpful for them and to make sure that these kind of decisions are not happening. Over the weekend, the energy minister from Qatar, Mr. Al-Qavi, said that in order for stability to return to the gas markets, which as you know have been quite volatile since the start of the invasion of Ukraine, that the com global community, in fact, needs to forgive and forget with Russia. Is that the policy of your government? Well, it's not. Actually, uh, uh, look, uh, first of all, politically speaking, when we are talking about this situation and the war, Qatar has took a very clear political stand on this. We don't accept an invasion of another country. We don't accept threatening uh, uh, by forces or the use of force. We don't accept civilians to be hurt. And this is like we've been demonstrating this throughout our votes within the United Nations. Our message to the Russians, to the Ukrainian, has been always like these kind of differences and disagreements shouldn't be resolved in a battlefield, should be resolved through dialogue. We've been in constant uh, engagement with all parties in order to see if there is uh, uh, any opportunity that Qatar can help and can support a peaceful resolution, we, would, we will never uh, hesitate to do so. Regarding uh, uh, this to be linked only to the energy, it's more, it's beyond the energy. It's not, it's, it's uh, an issue that we have seen a change in, 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 the, in, in the world landscape actually and uh, uh, undermining the international law and the UN Charter I mean, this is something much bigger than an immediate crisis with what we are facing, which is, uh, which is the energy. What we are uh, trying to do is to urge everyone to engage and talk. Right now, there, are no, there is an absence of, of any diplomatic efforts. What we want to see, we want to see a, a diplomatic efforts to overshadow the battlefield. We talk about petrodollar economies. Obviously, Qatar is an LNG dollar, if you will, economy. 
Do you believe that we're going to see Russian gas flowing back to Europe? Well, actually, it's the European decision at the end of the day. Uh, from our perspective and our policy as state of Qatar, we never politicize uh, the energy. We, uh, we see that food, medicine, energy, those are uh, items need to be protected because they are for the people. They are not uh, uh, for the governments or for political reasons. So politicizing the energy in itself is, is really something that, is, uh, again, is Qatar uh, policy and Qatar uh, principles. And we believe that what Europe is right now is facing is a challenge. It's not only because of the war. The war just accelerated a challenge. It has been, for a very long time, policies which has not been um, being put in a place were not realistic. Uh, for, you mean the for, dependency uh, on one country for, for your gas Dependency, Russia. but uh, no diversification, but also the transition uh, agenda that they put in a place is very ambitious and it's, it's not realistic. I think it's time for them to have a realistic approach toward the energy because gas will remain a destination fuel. We'll, we'll, uh, it's, it's a base load uh, yeah. uh, for any kind of, of energy. As well as the other uh, sources of energy, renewables are of course very important, but I think that the energy mix that we need to, uh, uh, to take in consideration should take in consideration all aspects, whether the sources, the type of energy, and everything. You talk a bit about politicizing energy. Recently, obviously, there has been a major investigation into whether or not Qatar is paying off EU officials. And I've read that in a statement, um, Qatar has said that um, any attempt to continue those investigations would endanger the agreements that you've signed with various European nations when it comes to energy deals. To your mind, isn't that politicizing energy? Isn't that using energy as a weapon? Well, I think there is a misquoting in what you have uh, mentioned here because, first of all, we reject the premise of, of the, those allegations, which has been just in the media. We didn't have anything until now from the Belgian authorities. And what we are hearing and what we are reading is there is an ongoing investigation that everybody should respect. and we. Uh, uh, should look at the outcomes of these investigations and we expect all our officials uh, uh, to abide with the, with the laws and uh, of each jurisdiction that they are operating in. This problem is a problem that's happening in Europe for a European institution. It's, it's better to, for them to look at their own institution and to do the steps that's required for them and not to drag our country name in, 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 such, a, in such a situation. So Qatar hasn't paid off anybody? Uh, just as, as a state of Qatar, we are 100% sure that this premise has, not, has no basis. We didn't see anything. There is an investigation ongoing. We have to see, we have to wait until the investigation is over and we, uh, uh, we are going to look at it. And we expect from the Belgian authorities to share with us the information at the right time uh, when they see it. Right now, regarding the statement that you have mentioned or the quote that you have mentioned, uh, this comment was done by a diplomat based on a resolution that the EU Parliament who jumped to conclusion while there is an ongoing investigation prohibiting uh, Qatari officials from engaging in conversation with the European Parliament and we've been uh, 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 disappointed with, with uh, disagreeing and disappointed with, uh, with such a resolution that actually didn't wait for the investigation uh, to end and to uh, put out the results for, for everyone. And just pointing on Qatar as, as a country and not to, uh, to stop any discussion with them and any engagement, while the engagement with the European Union and with the European Union inst institutions have been ongoing on geopolitical issues, on energy issues, on a lot of other issues. And these kind of uh, uh, resolutions and stopping these kind of conversation, of course, is going to affect the conversation. We are not threatening any country by stopping the energy. As we mentioned, the energy deals that we have between us and the European countries it has been a commercial deals that handled by a company, a commercial company in Qatar, which is Qatar Energy, mm. and they are dealing with other commercial company. And we have a track record that we have never missed any shipment. We have never politicized our energy and using it, using it or weaponized our energy as, as, as a tool for threatening any other country. Talk to me about the World Cup. Do you believe that Qatar was unfairly treated in the media? 
Well, definitely, it has been unfairly treated. Uh, a lot of the reports that's been uh, put out against Qatar uh, uh, was really uh, written away from the reality. And most of the people who were writing about Qatar and reporting about Qatar, we have seen this. They never even bothered to come and to see themselves. And even, uh, uh, unfortunately, we have seen some of the well-established uh, media uh, outlets they were there and they are trying to picture something different than the reality or trying to block some Do of the games to be broadcast. Do you believe though it was racism? Well, we, we think there is some sense of uh, superiority and arrogance. In, BBC in, that. in particular? I'm not, I'm not naming any, any network, but uh, we have seen, like we have noticed this. This has been very systematic from few countries, from few uh, media outlets that they didn't accept the fact that a small Middle Eastern country, a Muslim country, can host a world event. And we ended up hosting one of the most successful tournaments. What's the next world event to come to Qatar? Is it going to be the Olympics? Uh, we hope. Uh, we bid twice and we hope that the third time, uh, I think we proved for the world that we are a country that can be able to host a major event like the World Cup, which has been, thanks God, with zero incident and uh, people were happy, the quality of the games were top level, I think the fans experience was uh, were outstanding and from our perspective that we are able to host also another event and uh, things will continue, we are hosting the Asian Cup next year, uh, the Asian Olympics or the Asian Games in 2030 and things are just going to continue. Iran, 60% uranium enrichment, do you believe that they're going to get a bomb? Well, uh, we've seen actually uh, now uh, the pause that the talks uh, have in the past few months and the increase or, or the escalation in the rhetoric between the West and Iran has been very much worrying for us. And uh, the problems that we are facing right now that there is no conversation and there are a lot of other issues that have been added uh, to these talks, which made it more and more complicated. From our uh, point of view... Like the Iranians very, helping the Russians with drones? And it's, ve it's very important for us to see uh, at least a resolution for the JCPOA to bring them all back to the agreement, to address all countries concerned in that. And this is something very important for us, for our regional stability. From our perspective in Qatar, Iran is a next-door neighbor. Uh, uh, the absence of the JC, of JCPOA and increasing enrichment and uh, uh, the West are not talking and engaging with the Iran is just endangering the situation and this is what we want to avoid. We are in continuous engagement with Iran, continuous engagement with the US and with the European countries, trying to find a common ground for them to come back to the negotiations and to reverse all these uh, measures being taken uh, uh, by Iran recently and bring them back to the JCPOA. This is what we want to see happen. Foreign Minister, before I let you go, I'd like you to address the questionable reputation that many believe Qatar has when it comes to business. And I am referencing specifically your former Prime Minister dropping off a hundred million pounds or so, um, or was it a million? in a bag to the now king of the United Kingdom, and I'm talking about King Charles. Also, the Mayborn Group, the former prime minister, in a major lawsuit with one of the biggest and most respected developers in the United Kingdom. Things like that really raise eyebrows when it comes to best practices. How do you respond to that as a government? Because at the end of the day, whether he is a former prime minister or not, he has diplomatic immunity, and a lot of people wonder how closely tied your government is to the actions of a former minister. Well, actually, uh, look, Hadley, our government, government agency, Sovereign Wealth Fund, all of them, they are acting and operating according to the laws and regulations of all countries that we've been operating in. We've done tons of successful deals, very clear and very positive for us as a sovereign wealth fund and for the countries that we've been investing in and uh, creating a lot of jobs, uh, adding uh, growth to their economies. So you're and not we've responsible been, we've for been, these we, actors? We, we've been a net positive, honestly, to all our partners that we, we've been working with. Uh, 
I think that creating a perception just, you know, uh, uh, because Qatar is, has been like a rich country and just thinking about it that way is, is really unfair. I mean, we worked very hard to become a rich country. It's not, uh, uh, it wasn't like we, are not, we were not born and we have a golden spoon in our mouths. We were, we were going through difficulties. We reached to a level in the 90s when Qatar was a bankrupted country. We worked very hard for our gas development. But stories like this undermine that narrative. Uh, unfortunately, there are, there are people who are, uh, uh, who are writing even these stories. I don't know really much details about the story that you mentioned, on, just from the media. But, I mean, the country as a country, the government, all the institutions within the government, they've been operating in a very clear and very transparent manner. And this is something that we are very proud of. And we will continue working that way. People believe different. It's up to them at the end of the day. What we will do, what we will see is right. Yeah. Sports. Any deals on the horizon? Well, as long as it will be uh, uh, compelling and commercially attractive and feasible investment as an investment, we will definitely look at opportunities. Well, um, any discomfort with the fact that Saudi Arabia has suddenly become a player in the football space? Well, uh, I, th I think that the amount of investment that we are seeing in, in the football space is, is really for the benefit of, of, uh, of the game itself. And we have seen how, how it's advancing and how it's becoming more and more popular and valuable.